All right, we're checking out the only game where you can test whether or not eight gajillion laser pens could destroy the Earth. It's Universe Sandbox. Universe Sandbox is a game with Florida. It is also a game where you can have all of your stupidest questions answered. Today, we're gonna find out just how many laser pointers it would take to blow up the Earth. Actually, I'm kind of curious how many laser pointers it would take to just like start damaging the Earth, and then how many it takes to outright vaporize the Earth. So in order to understand exactly what we're dealing with here we first have to understand how many watts a laser pointer has a quick Google search shows us that the answer is a oh, five milliwatt so it's not even an actual watt so that is literally 0 0.005 of a watt now if we want to we can go over here to our tools grab our laser. Is there an actual laser pointer? Oh, there is a laser pointer. I like green. And Universe Sandbox does in fact have the appropriate level of wattage for one single laser pointer. Only our laser pointer is not going to be doing like, you know, 0.06 the radius of Earth. Just Blad just laser pointing at everyone in Florida. <laughs> now, as you can see, the laser pointer is not causing the surface of the Earth to heat up at all. It's not causing the oceans to boil. And that quite frankly is unacceptable. Acceptable. I like how every question like that can be answered in Universe Sandbox is always a question of what does it take to destroy the Earth? I was looking to see what the width of a laser pointer beam is, and Google says it's between one to two millimeters. So, uh, we'll do 1.5. How about that? I'll go right in the middle. Oh, you know what? Let's do a secondary test for this because now I'm curious if AI understands how to blow up the planet better than we do. Let's ask ChatGPT how many laser pointers it would take to vaporize the Earth. Hey, Gray, ready to dive in? I sure am. How many laser pointers would it take to destroy the Earth? All right, so you would need, oh my God, 474 sextrillion. <laughs> lasers that's billions of lasers per person on earth okay so this is the number that we're gonna see oh no it's even more than that because that's using 15 watt industrial lasers no 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 we want laser pointers so it would be this number times 3000 so hold on let's uh let's go ahead and do this real quick what is this this ridiculous number, 474 sextillion times 3,000? Because I want it in laser pointers. All righty. Yep, thank you very much. Okay, so 1.422 octillion. <laughs> okay. I do appreciate that the number to destroy the Earth almost had 420 in it. So knowing the, the sheer number that we're going to need at this point, we can start multiplying the laser pointers by, you know, a lot. So let's just, let's just move straight to 10 million laser pointers. So that brings this up to 50,000. I don't even think that that's enough. So obviously, you know, I might as well aim up for Florida right here. Uh, is anyone feeling that? Anyone? Anything at all? We got a medium frequency over here. All right, look at my wavelength. God, probably someone just lost their iris, but I don't think that there's any real damage being done to the planet. You'll know <laughs> if there's damage being done. They put the cloud cover on there. Maybe we'll see the clouds vaporize. Nope, nothing yet. Okay, so what happens if we move over to uh, 10 billion? So that would put this at, uh, what was that, 50 million. All right, now, now I think we're probably getting somewhere. So how about this? Any damage? No, the, the temperature of the Earth is actually gone down. I, I have somehow managed to heal the earth with my laser pointer rather than do any tangible damage. All right, we're going to do 100 trillion laser pointers. How about that? Now we're going to need uh, 500 billion. All right, are we anywhere yet? Anything? Anyone feeling that? No, it's somehow gotten colder again. Oh God, my eyes. Sorry, I had to rename the planet real quick. So now what we'll do is we'll just start multiplying this times 10. So right now we've got, uh, let's see, from 11 to, let's try a nice easy 15. Are we feeling anything? Is anyone, is anyone's epidermis getting slowly vaporized off of their body? No, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it. All right, that's fine. Let's try, uh, let's try 25. How about that? This number's getting really crazy. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh God. Okay, I didn't realize that it would be quite so bad quite so quickly. <laughs> now from here, you do get to, we're gonna have to back this down. You do get to see uh, the impressive instant vaporization 
of all of the greenery in the planet, as well as the atmosphere. <laughs> uh, maybe parts of the planet can survive, though. It may be all right. This may not be that bad. Okay, if we look at the planet, we still have a life likelihood of 88%. Okay, well, as I speak, the life likelihood is, is going down. Now, the problem that we're going to have is the gigantic supernova, which is about 4,000 degrees Celsius that's coming from the impact. Uh, that might end up eating all the way into Canada. I'm not really 100% sure. Let's go ahead and uh, speed things up here a little bit. All right, it is slowly moving. All right, we're at 11 minutes a second over here, so it's not that bad. It did end up, like, pushing a lot of the water that was surrounding this area out, and now it's just kind of, like, you know, instantaneously vaporizing the water. Okay, well, the damage has been done. Uh, honestly, it's not as bad as I would have thought. Look at that. The water even kind of comes back over the... Oh, look at that! The greenery came back! That's kind of cool! So the Earth can indeed fix itself. Now, if anyone was wondering, that damage was with 250 sextrillion laser pointers. So it did not, in fact, blow up the Earth. In fact, dare I say, look at this. It didn't even do enough damage to significantly hinder the Earth. As you can see, time has passed. Everything has grown back in Florida somehow. You know, I just meant to click here to move the planet, and I ended up blasting Florida a second time. I swear to you, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> oh, I guess we can do another test here to see if uh, it regenerates itself a second time. So there's the water. The water comes back over and the greenery does come back. Okay. The only problem is now we kind of have like a permanent lake just chilling out in the middle of the United States. Florida is slowly getting segregated from the rest of the, from like the rest of the United States right now. It's mostly just the East Coast. And then it's kind of like the West Coast. The only difference is we have all the plant life. Okay, let's not accidentally click on that again. Now, again, this still has it like instantly blown up the planet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to do this uh, up to 30. How about that? Okay, I just did the math for this, assuming like the calculator is correct. So this is going to be 25 octillion laser pointers. So if Chad GPT is right, this should be almost like 20 times the amount needed to just absolutely obliterate the planet. I'm going to slow things down for this because we, we want to make sure that we catch all this. All right, one second per second. So this is one second of that on the planet. Ready? One one thousand. Okay, I'm pretty sure the math checks out because that gaseous cloud surrounding the planet, I'm pretty sure is instantaneous death to every living organism. <laughs> so what we're going to do is to, oh, it's only 54,000 degrees Celsius at the point of impact A. <laughs> All right, let's see if the earth can, uh, can fight through this. Now the earth hasn't been completely vaporized. Uh, I would say that all of the life on the earth is probably dead after this, but let's see if the earth can, uh, can regenerate here. There goes the, the giant shock wave. The shock wave is moving through the entirety of the planet. I mean, considering the, the impact is only 1.5 millimeters, that's kind of cool. What is the, uh, what is the life likelihood right now on planet earth? Again, it seems like earth can take a ton of damage. It's 85.2%. Okay. Life likelihood actually went up and now the life likelihood is dropping drastically. I really don't know what happened, but the earth went from totally being okay to not being so okay anymore. Like this is beyond the whole Thanos, I don't feel so good thing. Only 30% of the entire earth is now able to like be alive. I'm gonna go ahead and say that if I did this for any length of time, like we could do it for a couple of seconds, there may not be an earth left. So let's try it for like five seconds. So like one, two, three, yeah, so it ain't good. The surface of the Earth right now got to almost 100,000 degrees Celsius. Luckily, it's dropping at this point. So what I did is I wanted like time to go by a lot to see if the Earth would heal itself. And if it did, what would happen? Uh, the life likelihood dropped down to 20%. But here's what's interesting. The overall temperature of the planet, I'm assuming because there's a lot less water that's actually on it, is now 2 degrees Celsius. That is the average temperature on the planet. The maximum 
temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Over in Florida, it's four <laughs> degrees Celsius. In case anyone's wondering, that's about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Needless to say though, this was not enough to instantaneously vaporize the earth. So obviously we're going to have to go up from this. So let's do two, three, four, five. No joke, ChatGPT had to think about this for 40 seconds to figure out how many laser pointers this is so far. This is 2.5 decillion laser pointers. That's two five zero 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 z